everyone. I'm Gordon Half, technology evangelist with Red Hat. And I'm here today with my colleague, Theon, to talk about IT foundations. Theon, introduce yourself, please. Uh, hey, Gordon. Uh, my name is Dion Ballard. I am on the REL product marketing team. So I like to talk about operating systems and foundations quite a lot. That's part of my job. So I have to get this out of the way first. That sounds pretty boring, but I'm <laughs> guessing you disagree with that. Uh, no, I mean, I see the point for that. It's it's sort of like um, it's sort of like a chair or car insurance. You You really don't think about it. Uh, because it's boring until the minute it is not boring and then it becomes the only thing you can think about. Uh, so ideally, yes, your operating system should be boring because it should be stable and do what you want and not put up a fuss. Um, it's just the, it's the few times that matter when, when it becomes a lot more interesting as a discussion. <laughs> Exciting is not always good. No, 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 it is not always good. Uh, sometimes you want boring. Sometimes you want reliable and predictable and all the things that you generally don't want your first date to describe you as, you really want your, you know, your operating system customers to describe you like that. So what do you see organizations getting wrong the most with respect to their IT foundations? Oh, that's a broad question just because Every infrastructure is unique to the business running it. In general, I think what we see now is people chasing after things without a, a big picture of what they're doing. So we're all hearing that there's a need to innovate, there's a need to develop, um, particularly with recent events, people have needed to transform a lot more quickly maybe than their previous schedules had taken into account, which is great. But that sometimes means that they would just run out and do things. And a lot of different teams would run out and do a lot of different things. And after a while, you get this, um, it's never going to go away, this spaghetti model of infrastructure where things aren't connected, things are duplicated, things are wasted. Um, and I think that that lack of a big picture, that lack of a plan typically is what's going to trip people up. And, and that's just true in anything that you do in business. So our State of Enterprise Open Source 2021 survey found that infrastructure modernization was the number one use of enterprise open source. Now, historically, this would have meant things like going from Solaris to Linux, going from WebSphere to JBoss, uh, you know, basically going from expensive, le often less flexible proprietary uh, software to, uh, to open source software, which initially being kind of driven but mostly by cost, although that's changed a great deal. But today, I think it means more than that, given containers and all that, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, people are, uh, the biggest move is, of course, toward public cloud, uh, I think is, is what we see the most. And modernization could mean a simple hardware modernization. People used to move uh, from Solaris to a PC so they, or a, a workstation so they could run you know, Linux or a different operating system, because it used to be that the hardware and software were, were bundled. We're seeing that abstract more and more away. First, it was physical systems and virtual systems, and now cloud. And people are moving for scale. They're moving for speed. They're uh, moving for availability. They're moving because they need to be able to do self-service to ramp things up. Um, so they're moving for more strategic reasons now, rather than more commodity or, um, functional physical reasons. But again, that that uh, introduces a lot of challenges that didn't used to exist. I mean, when you had everything, when you had your server room where you could go in and look at your racks of beautiful hardware, uh, there were certain aspects of that that made it much easier to control. You could control physical access, you could control network access, user access. Uh, there were a lot of things around management and security that were simpler because the times were simpler. And so people are innovating for very important reasons, but sometimes they're losing the lessons that they learned in their old, in their old uh, data centers. We hear a lot about innovation. In fact, in our enterprise open source survey, uh, access to innovation was one of the top benefits that people saw to enterprise open source. But there's a potential dark side to harnessing all that innovation as part of these modern platforms. And that's complexity. How do you deal with that? Uh, you have to do it by simplifying where you can. Um, this is what I was talking about before with 
uh, people don't have projects spinning up and they don't know where they're going. Uh, one thing that I've heard a lot of customers say is they'll have a team and they'll have a guy with a credit card and he goes up and he spins up an AWS instance and a different team with a different project is working in Azure and someone else is working in Google and they may not know it. And they're all trying to access the same data or they're all generating data that they all ultimately rely on. And you hit these these problems of you have different types of applications running in different places, you have different management tools, you have different data structures, you have all of this that is compounded because everything is siloed. It's easy and it's accessible, but it's separate. Um, and this is where we we talk a lot about the difference between multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. And quite frankly, nobody really defines any of these realistically. But I, I think looking at it as a continuum it, it's a it's a goal. How much control do you have over your environment? Um, so when you can standardize, when you can automate wherever possible, like say with the operating system, but where you can get that layer of consistency, it brings control into these areas that are inherently disparate and inherently complex with, with different environments and tools to work with. And I think that you have to simplify where you can because we are moving toward more complex environments. And it's in that sense, it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get bigger. It's just going to get more sprawling. Um, and so that's where being intentional, having a plan, having these best practices can make a huge difference in what you do. I found that over the years, hybrid clouds have often been talked about in this context of some idealized end state, which probably doesn't exist in any organization in the world. So to be clear, we're talking about practical goals here. Practical goals. Oh, yeah. Like if you read the hype, even for, especially from a couple of years ago, um, I mean, it sounds magical. It sounds amazing. It is a single pane of glass where you can have one place to look and, and you have all these environments. You may not even know where everything is because everything is so nicely integrated. And I think we all know in, in practice that never lasts. It's kind of like organizing your pantry. It's great for about <laughs> three and a half seconds. Um but in reality, you're going to have projects that come up and come down. You're going to have shifts in data. You're going to have something like, you know, a, a worldwide pandemic, or you're going to have a disrupt, some kind of disruption in your industry where everything you do needs to pivot and whatever beautiful plans you had five minutes ago aren't going to survive. Um, but I think having a more practical thing, again, outlining best practices, outlining the components that you want to be standard and then the ones that can be uh, adapted as needed. It, it can really help to provide the, that kind of guidance, those, those kind of principles without being trying to be so prescriptive that your environment becomes brittle or simply unattainable. And I think that that's the challenge that, that people are trying to balance right now. So an organization has standardized and simplified their IT foundation. At least they've given it the old college try at any rate, what benefits would they expect to see at this point? Was it all worth it? Oh, it will be in a, in a couple of areas. So when you have a standard environment, that allows you to automate. And I know that that's the word that we kick around a lot, but automation, depending on the area that you're looking at, it can save time investments easily over 90% for your administrators. Um, it can tie in with other processes. What that does is automation, it's not just we have a robot doing things, it uh, it applies consistency, it can apply policies. So if you're having, say, uh, an IoT environment where you have 100,000 edge devices, or if you're having a, a new cloud instance spinning up where you want to be able to dynamically scale those instances according to demand, you want everything to be consistent because otherwise you don't have an environment, you have 100,000 environments you're trying to manage. Automation allows you to imply consistent configuration. It can allow you to track patching uh, security uh, vulnerabilities that are announced. Um, it can allow you to change policies, uh, to change user authentication, service administration. There's a huge amount just through the ability to consistently apply your policy preferences. Is, it, that is incredibly powerful. And the amount of time savings for your administrators is huge. So just, just simplifying can actually take care of a huge amount of things, particularly in that security and compliance area. Um, and, and that is incredibly powerful over time. Well, thank you, Dion. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you, Gordon.